Hey guys, welcome to my GCSE Maths Past Paper walkthrough. So today I'm going to be doing one of the um, math specimen papers for the new 9 to 1 GCSE. I'm just going to be walking through it just to show you how I would answer the questions. So just a quick disclaimer, I'm obviously not a maths teacher, I'm just a maths student. Um, but this is just how I would personally do some of the questions, so hopefully it will help a bit. Obviously I'll be checking against the mark scheme as I go along just to make sure that I'm obviously not failing everything and I'm not giving you terrible advice. But anyway, yeah, so um, this is the uh, higher tier paper, it's one of the calculator ones, it's an hour and a half, it's on the AQA spec, um, but obviously maths is maths. I'm personally on the Edexcel IGCSE spec, but there's not many past papers for that, so that's why I'm doing this one here. Um, it's the calculator paper, so I've got my calculator, and um, I'll leave a link down in the description to when I'm like halfway through the paper, just in case you want to skip to some of the harder questions. Okay, so anyway, let's get started. So which sequence is the geometric progression? So geometric progressions, um, there's where you times things by a common factor, and so I think this would be one, two, four, eight, because each time you're timesing by two. Which of these is not used to prove that triangles are congruent? Circle your answer. Okay, so I think this is angle, 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 because if the three angles are the same, that proves that they're similar triangles, but that doesn't mean they're the same size, and congruent triangles have to be the same size as each other, so I think it's angle, angle, angle. Circle the expression that is equivalent to 2a plus 5a times 4a minus a. So this is testing bid mass, I think, so we times these first, you get 2a plus 20a squared minus a, and so you get 20a squared uh, plus a, which is the same as a plus 20a squared. Circle the equation of a line that's parallel to y equals 5x plus 2. So if a line is parallel, it has to have the same gradient, so it has to have 5, so we're looking for whatever line has a gradient of 5, and that's y equals 5x plus 2. In a sale, the original price of a bag was reduced by one fifth, and the sale price of the bag is twenty nine fifty. So I'm going to call the original price P, and so a reduction of a fifth you times it by zero point eight. So P times zero point eight equals twenty nine forty, and so to work out the original price, uh, you do twenty nine forty divided by zero point eight, and if I put that into my calculator, you get. Da -da -da -da. £36.75. and Now we have some Venn diagrams. So that's the universal sets, that's all the numbers we have to work with. S is square numbers, E is even numbers. So I'm going to go through the list and look through to see if it's a square or an even number. So 1 is a square number, but it's not even, so it's going in this one. 2 is not a square number, but it's even, so it's going in here. 3 is not a square number and it's not even so it's going outside. Four is a square number and it's even and so I'm just going through and I'm doing that for every single number. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. So four is the only number in the middle. One of these numbers is chosen at random write down the probability that it's S into section E. So S into section E is this middle bit here, so that's only one number four, so the probability is one out of, and then let's count, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, oh yeah, one to twelve terms in total, so it's one out of twelve. Uh, one out of twelve, and I'm not going to put that into a decimal because it's a um, recurring number, so I'm going to leave it as a fraction. A coin is rolled onto a grid of squares and lands randomly on the grid. To win, the coin must land completely within one of the squares. Uh, okay, so cool. We've got two different estimates for the probability of winning. I, what I'm going to do is there's three different ways you can work it out. You can work out Mira's probability of winning, John's probability of winning, or the probability of winning of the whole thing, both of them. So I'm going to do Mira's probability and the probability of the whole thing. So Mira had six wins out of 50 goes and altogether John and Mira together they had 28 plus 6 wins which is 34 wins and altogether they rolled a hundred times so those are my two probabilities 6 out of 50 
add 34 out of 100. And you could cancel that down, but for probabilities, I like to leave it as it is. Um, it doesn't say we have to cancel it down, so I'm not going to cancel it down. Which of your estimates is the better estimate for the probability of winning? I'm going to put 34 out of 100 because that's the probability for the largest number of trials because it's got both of them. Uh, so I'm going to put probability for largest number of trials. Cool. So graphs. Here is the graph of 4x minus 3y equals 12 from 0 to 4. Cool. And by drawing a second graph on the grid, work out an approximate solution to this simultaneous equation. So this one here is the one already on the grid, and this is the other equation. And so to work out a simultaneous equation using a graph, all we need to do is graph this equation and then find where they intersect. So I'm going to find the x-intercept and the y-intercept as my two points. So if we cover up x, so 2y equals 6 when x equals 0. So y equals 3 when x equals 0, so 0, 3 is our y-intercept. And then if we put y to 0, so 3x equals 6, and so x equals 2 when y equals 0. So now I'm going to draw the points up using a ruler, but obviously I'm using an iPad, so I can just do that. But if you're in an exam, you'd use a ruler. And then we keep going, and we find where the points intersect which is approximately, uh, we're going to go with this point here, so that is 2.5 and that's minus 0 0.7. So those are our answers, x equals 2.5, oh, I don't know why I've got a line there, and y equals minus 0 0.7. You have to make sure you get both the x and the y because you're solving for both of them and yeah, it's where they intersect. Written as the product of its prime factors, 672 is that times that times that and so we have to do similar for 252. So I'm going to do a factor tree. So 252, divide that by two and you get 126. Divide that by two again and uh, my mental mass is terrible, hence why I'm using a calculator. And then 63 can't be divided by 2, so if we divide it by 3 next, uh, we get 21. And then if we divide that by 3 again, because that can't be divided by 2, we get 3 and 7. And so we have two twos, so we have 2 squared, 2 threes, 3 squared, times 7. So work on that highest common factor. So to do that, we have to, um, if we did a Venn diagram, we had to look at the factors they have in common. So they have two twos in common. They have one three in common and they have one seven. So it's two squared times three times seven. And that gives us 84. And so that's the highest common factor because you look at the factors in common and then you times them together. At a school, the number of boys to number of girls is 9 to 7. There are 116 more boys than girls. Work out the number of students at the school. So if we look at the ratio, there's two parts between the boys and the girls. The difference between them is two parts. And so two parts equals 116. And so one part equals 116 divided by 2, which equals 58. And so if we times that by 9, 58 times 9, that's the number of girls. And if we do 58 times 7, that's the number of boys. And if we add them together, that gives us the total number of students, which is 928. So when you're doing ratios, one good way to approach the question is always to work out how many um, things are in each part. In this case, how many students. So we worked out there's two parts between them and it told us that those two parts are worth 116, and so we could obviously work from there. Circle the equation with roots four and minus eight. So four um, x, x minus eight, so that would give us four x equals zero, and so that would give us root of zero. But if we look at this one, x minus four, x plus eight, that gives us x minus four equals zero, x is four, and x plus eight is zero, x is minus eight, so this gives us the correct ones x minus 4, x plus 8 equals 0. 
r equals x squared over y um, work out the value of r. So what I would usually do here is just plug it into my calculator. So the calculator screen's a bit rubbish, obviously, so I'll just write down here what I'm going to put in the calculator. 3.6 e5 squared over 7.5 e4. And so I'll put that to my calculator now. And that gives us 1728000. And so we need to give the sta answer in standard forms to an appropriate degree of accuracy. So that would equal 1.728 times 10 to the, and then we count how many things after the one. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 times 10 to the 6. And because this question uh, was all with one uh, decimal place, I'm going to give my answer to one decimal place. So that's 1.7 times 10 to the 6. Two spheres have radii in the ratio 5 to 3. Find the ratio of their volumes. So 5 to 3 is the length ratio, and we know that volumes is length cubed. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cube each of them. So 5 cubed is 1, 2, 5. 3 cubed is 27. And so that gives us 1, 2, 5 to 27. A pattern is made from two similar trapeziums. This is an important word. It's bolded. Similar. Show that the shaded area is 294. We know that the equation of working out the area of a trapezium is half A plus B times H. And so using that, we can work out the area of the big trapezium because this is A, this is B, this is H. So half 18 plus 10 times 25. And I'm gonna stick that to my calculator equals 350 and I'm going to write down that that's the area of the big trapezium and then because we know the scale factor from the big trapezium to the small trapezium because this side is equal to that side so the scale factor is 4 over 10 because we're going from the big trapezium to the small trapezium so the length uh, scale factor is 4 over 10 and so that means the area scale factor is 4 over 10 squared and so to work out the area of the small trapezium you do 350 times 4 over 10 squared which equals, drum roll please, 56. And then I was going to write down so the examiner clearly knows what on earth I'm on about. Area of small trapezium. And then to work out the shaded area, it's the big area of the trapezium minus the area of the small trapezium. So it's 350 minus 56 which equals 294 centimeters squared which is what we've been asked to prove okay moving on the pattern has one line of symmetry oh we're still in the same question <laughs> the pattern has one line of symmetry work out the size of angle x okay so this question involves trigonometry so we know that this length here is 25 and we want to find out this angle so if we can find out this length here then we'll have everything we need to do some trigonometry so because this trapezium is symmetrical we know that these lengths oh we know that these lengths here are equal to 18 minus 10 because that's the length of both of those then divided by 2 that gives us this length over here and so that is equal to 4 so i was going to draw out the triangle so you could clearly see it we have this angle here which we're working out we have 4 and we have 25 and so this length here is our hypotenuse this length here is our opposite length and this length here is our alternate length and so we have O and A, and so with using Sokotoa, we know that we had to use tan. So tan x equals O over A, which equals 25 over 4. And so we know that x equals tan to the minus 1, 25 over 4, which equals, drum roll please, when we put that to calculator, 25 over 4 
which equals 80.9 degrees. And then there's some other digits, but I'm just gonna leave it to 80.9. Um, I tend to always leave things to three significant figures, but you could round up to 81 if you wanted to. Anne picks a four digit number. The first digit is not zero. The four digit zero is a multiple of five. Oh, okay. Okay, so if we look at each digit and see how many possibilities there would be. So for the first digit, which is the uh, units digit, there's only two options because it could be a five or a zero. So we're going to do two. And, and then in the tens digit, it could be any of them. It could be 10, 20, 30, 40, whatever. And so, um, or it could be zero. So that's 10 possibilities. And then the same with the hundreds, you could have uh, no hundreds, a hundred, two hundreds, yada, 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 all the way up to 900. So that's 10. And then the one that's different, because the first digit is not zero, we can't have zero there, but we could still have 1,000, 2,000, blah, 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 all the way up to 9,000. So we have nine possibilities. So 2 times 10 times 10 times 9 equals... 1,800. So, 16. C is a positive integer. Prove that 6C cubed plus 30C over 3C squared plus 15 is an even number. So the first thing I'm going to do is going to factorise the top and bottom lines. So the top line factorises to 6C, C squared plus 5, because if you times those out, 6C times C squared is 6C cubed, 6C times 5 is 30 squared, uh, sorry, is 30C, then the bottom line, it factorises to 3c squared plus 5. Because again, when you times those out, you get that back. So as we can see, we have c squared plus 5 on the top and bottom line. So what we can do is cancel those. And so we get 6c over 3, because we've cancelled the top and bottom lines, which is equal to... 2c and then we just have to do a little statement to prove that that's even so we could say and uh because multiples of two are always even 2c is even as required so it's just a little statement to show the examiner that you know we've proved what they want us to prove and i can't draw lines but anyway there you go <laughs> So, the next question. The distance from the Earth to the Sun is 93 million miles. Assume it takes 365 days for the Earth to travel once around the Sun, and the Earth travels in a circle with the Sun at the centre. So the first thing I'm going to do is just draw a little diagram. So here is our diagram. We've got the Sun at the centre, and then we've got the Earth travelling around. And so the radius of the circle is 93 million miles. So that's 93 times 10 to the 6. So the first thing we need to do is work out the circumference of the circle, and the circumference is equal to 2 pi r, which is equal to 2 pi times 93 times 10 to the 6. And so that's our circumference, and I'm just going to leave it as that for now. I'm not going to put that as my calculator just yet. I'm just going to leave that as it is for now. And so that is in miles. And we know that the speed is 365 days, but what we need to do is convert that to hours. So 365 days is 365 times 24 hours, and that is equal to 8,760. And so speed is equal to distance over time. If we worked out our distance, we know our time, and so we can just plug this into our calculator, 22 pi times 10, 93 times 10 to the 6 over 8760 and if we plug that into our calculator we get 66,705. So you could write that answer in standard form if you wanted to but I'm just going to leave it as that. It actually takes 365 and a quarter days for the Earth to travel once around the sun. How does this affect your answer to part A? So basically it's asking us how does this affect our speed and we're increasing the time it takes and so if we look at speed equals distance over time, if we increase the time that's going to decrease the speed because they're inversely proportional. 
So it decreases the speed. So in this formula, t equals n minus 6 squared plus 1, the value of t is always greater than 1 because n minus 6 squared is always greater than 0. And so we know that anything squared has to be a positive number, you can't have a negative square number. And so this might appear true because it always has to be positive, but n minus 6 could equal 0, and so if you square 0 and then add 1 to it, you get 1, which would be the same as 1, but here she say the value of t is always greater than 1, which is not true because it's always greater than or equal to 1. So I'm going to write uh, false because n minus 6 could equal 0. So what's the only value of t that is a square number? So using the logic we've just used up here, we know that we could produce a result that is 1, and 1's a square number, so I'm just going to put 1 because we know that if you put 6 as n, 6 minus 6 equals 0 squared, so 0 plus 1 equals 1, 1 squared number, ta-da, there's our answer, it's 1 mark, so there's nothing more complicated than that. fx equals 3x, circle the expression for uh, the inverse of that function, and so the opposite of times something by 3 is dividing something by 3, so x over 3. y is directly proportional to the root of x. So, and then it's given us these values here, work out the value of a. So first thing we're going to do is find a formula for y in relation to x. So y is equal to k times root x because it says it's directly proportional. And so if we plug these values here, 2 is equal to k times the root of 36. And so k is equal to 2 divided by 6, which is equal to a third. So our formula is y equals root x over 3. So now we've been given that y equals 5, and so if we plug it into our formula, 5 is equal to root a over 3, and so we get 15 is root a, and so a is equal to 15 squared, which is equal to 15 times 15, 225, and so that's our answer. A company makes boxes of cereal, I love cereal. A box usually contains 450 grams of cereal. Here are two options for special offer. 20% more cereal, price remains the same. Usual amount of cereal, 15% off the price. So, let's look at option A. So in option A, we have 450 times 1.2, that's how many grams of cereal is in that box because it's a 20% increase. And so that is equal to 540 grams. And so if we say that price is equal to 1, so that's 540 grams over 1, which is equal to 540. And then I'm just going to label that A. And then option B, we have the usual amount of cereal, so 450 grams, but then we have 15% off the price, so the price of B is 1 times 0 0.85, which is equal to 0 0.85, and so the value is 450 over 0 0.85, which is equal to... 529. And so you may be wondering what those two numbers mean. Well, because we put the grams over the price, that's 450 grams per unit price. But option B is 520 grams per unit price. And that means we get more grams per unit price with option A. And so the answer is option A. This histogram shows the ages and years of members of a chess club. I hate histograms. There are 22 members with ages in the range 40, age 65. And so we need to work out the number of members with ages in the range 25, age 40. And so with a histogram, I always like to make myself a table. So we have frequency width and frequency density, which is equal to the frequency over the width. So we know that for the age, for the range 40 to 65, that's a range of 25, and we're told that the frequency is 22. And so the frequency density, which is the frequency over the width, is 22 over 25, which is 
0.88. And so we know that this height here, wherever it is, is 0.88. So if we have 0.88 divided by 11 squares, that means each square is 0.08. So we have 0.08. And so the first black line here is 0 0.4, then it's 0.8 and then it's 1.2, and then it's 1.6. So each box is going up in 0.4s. Okay, so then we need to work out the number of members with ages in the range 25 to 40. So that is a width of 15. And so we need to look at what the frequency density is because we want to work out the frequency. So uh, 25 to 40, that's this range here, and the chart the histogram it goes up to 2.4 so the frequency density is 2.4 so using the equation frequency density equals frequency over width we have the frequency density that's 2.4 we need to work out the frequency and we have the width which is 15 so that means the frequency is 2.4 times 15 and that is equal to 36 23 a bowl is the hemisphere with radius 6 centimetres and water fills two-fifths of the volume of the bowl. And then the water is poured into a hollow cone and the depth of the water in the cone is 12 centimetres. And so work out the radius of the surface of the water in the cone. So we know that these two amounts have to be the same volume because they're the same water that's just been poured out of here. So the first thing I'm going to work out is the volume of this water here using this hemisphere. So what I'm going to do is first write out a equation for the volume of water that we have up here. So it's 4 thirds pi r cubed, and then that's times by a half because it's a hemisphere, and then because it's only 2 fifths, you times that by 2 over 5, and that's the volume of water in the hemisphere bowl. And so if we plug the radius being 6 into that, we get 4 thirds pi times 6 cubed times a half times 2 fifths and that gives us 57 and 3 fifths pi which is a really weird number and so we know that's the volume of water and we know that's the same volume of water for this cone here and so the volume of a cone is a third pi r squared h and we're given h and we need to work out r. So I'm gonna write down an equation for the volume of the water in this cone again. So the volume of the cone is a third pi times r squared times 12, and that's the volume of the cone, and we know that it's equal to 57, three over five pi, and so we need to try and work out r. So to do that, what I'm going to do is take this 12 and the third pi over to the other side. So r squared equals 57, 3 over 5 pi over a third pi times 12. And then I'm, just, I'm going to square root all of that. So r equals, and because I'm lazy, I'm going to copy and paste that on my iPad. And so I'm going to plug this all into my calculator. So you could take this step by step, but I like to do things in my calculator all at once. I find that it's just the easiest and it looks the best on the page. So I'm going to plug that all into my calculator. And so that gives me 3.79. As I said, you could round that to 3.8, but I prefer to use three significant figures. So my answer is 3.79 centimetres. A big wheel is modelled as a circle with centre O and radius 15 metres. The wheel turns in an anti-clockwise direction, so that's that way. And the lowest point of the wheel is always 2 metres above horizontal ground. C is a point on the wheel H metres above horizontal ground, and angle COB is X. Show that H is equal to 17 minus 15 cos X. Okay, so we know that the O to this point here is also 15 because it's the radius of the circle and so we know that OB is equal to 15 plus 2 which is equal to 17 because it's this length here which is the radius and then this plus 2 here. So the next thing I'm going to work out is OA and here I'm going to use trigonometry. So this is the hypotenuse, this is the alternate and this is the opposite. 
and here we can see we're looking at the adjacent and the hypotenuse, so that's cos using Sokotoa. So cos x equals OA over 15, and that means OA equals 15 cos x. And so we know what this length here is, we know what this length here is, and so H must equal OB minus OA. So I'm going to write that down. H equals OB minus OA. And we worked out that OB is 17. We worked out that OA is 15 cos X. And so H equals 17 minus 15 cos X. And that's what we've been asked to find. And so that's our answer. D is a point on the wheel. Angle DOB is 120. Work out the height of D above horizontal ground. Uh, because we've just worked out a formula for H, we can just plug that in. So, uh, height is equal to 17 minus 15 cos 120, because that's our angle. And so, put that as the calculator. 17 minus 15 cos 120, we get 24.5. And we're still on this circle. Here is a sketch of the graph h equals 17 minus 15 cos x for one complete turn of the wheel. p is the highest point on the graph. Work out the coordinates of p. So this question is testing us on our knowledge of cosine graphs and we know that cosine graphs the highest point is at zero and then it goes down and its lowest point is when it's at 180 degrees because that's when the graph is equal to minus one. And uh, this is just the baseline. And so because we're looking at 17 minus 15 cos x, in order to get the highest value, we want the lowest value of cosine. And that happens when it's at 180 degrees, um, because that's the lowest point on the cosine graph. So the x coordinate is going to be 180. And so if we plug that in with h equals 17, minus 15 times cos 180 that gives us 17 minus 15 cos 180 that gives us 32 for the h value 2x squared minus 6x plus 5 can be written in the form a x plus b squared plus c where a b and c are positive numbers so this is a completing the square so we know that the number outside the brackets has to be 2 because that's the number that's in front of the uh, x squared term. So and then we have 2 and we need to work out x minus b squared plus c. Uh, so to work out this b value we have to look at the x term. And so we know we need to half this term because it's a square bracket. But then we have to half it again because we have this 2 outside the bracket. So that leaves us with 2 x minus 1.5 squared and so that sorts out the a term and the b term but now we need to get the c term so we need to look at what happens and what numerical term we get when we do all this over here so minus 1.5 squared is equal to 2.25 and if we times that by 2 because of this term in front of the brackets we get 4.5 and so how do you get to 5 from 4.5 well all you need to do is add a half so 5 minus 4.5 equals 0 0.5 and so that's our c term and so we get 2x minus 1.5 squared plus 0 0.5 and so our a term is 2 b term negative 1.5 and c term 0 0.5 or a half 25b, using your answer to part A or otherwise, solve 2x squared minus 6x plus 5 equals 8.5. So I'm going to take that and I'm going to use the uh, equation we just generated there. So 2x minus 1.5 squared plus 0.5 equals 8.5. And so I'm going to take this numerical term over to this side. So 2x minus 1.5 squared equals 8. Then I'm going to divide by 2 to get rid of this 2 here. So x minus 1.5 squared equals 4. Then I'm going to square root. So x minus 1.5 equals 2. And that's plus or minus 2, remember, because with square root it says a plus or a negative 2. And so if I take this 1.5 over to the other side, I get x 
equals either 1.5 plus 2 or x equals 1.5 minus 2 and those are our two answers so it's 3.5 or it's negative 0.5. And so those are our two answers, x equals 3.5 and negative 0.5. Two boxes are made with card. The boxes are similar cuboids. The smaller box has height 32. It takes 44% more card to make the larger box. Work out the height. So because it takes 44% more card, we know that the area ratio is 1 to 1.44. So that's the ratio for the areas. And then that means the scale factor. Um, so if we're going from the smaller box to the bigger box, that means the scale factor is equal to 1.44 over 1, which is equal to 1.44. And so because that's the area scale factor, the height scale factor has to be square root that. So the length scale factor or length k is equal to root 1.44 so 32 times root 1.44 is equal to 38.4 and so that's the end of the paper uh, i hope this was helpful in any way if you have any questions or queries or you want me to go over something again or you just don't understand or just anything please feel free to just leave a comment below if this video was any help at all please consider liking it or subscribing or sharing it with a friend i don't know if it's been any help just please consider and as always thanks for watching and i'll see you very soon goodbye